Hey all, um, I wasn't planning on leaving a video today, but I just got notification um, from YouTube that I had two comments on my last video. And um, they were, I think they were hidden because um, I have it on a setting that like hold inappropriate comments, you know, for review. And I guess YouTube knew that they were inappropriate in a way, interesting. But anyway, um, the first one was from somebody named Psalm 23, and um, they went on and on about how I um, was wearing a scantily uh, sexy tank top in my last video, and um, I kept fixing it, you know, pulling it up and fixing it. <laughs> and um, then somebody else wrote another comment under them saying, that I'm fake and I just, you know, it stung. It definitely stung for, di for different reasons because um, both of them were Christians. That's the first reason that it stung. The second reason is because I um, have gained weight and whenever you see somebody fixing their, their tops and their shirts like this, it's because they've gained weight and because they don't fit in them correctly anymore. And uh, so that's why I was fixing my top and I just thought, wow, man, I've seen some pastors, daughters and pastors and leaders in the church wear a wedding dress that was cut like big cleavage out, everything. Not correct to do that. So, of course, my mind went to others, blaming others, thinking of others, comparing myself to others. And that's not appropriate. So that that was a conviction in my heart right there. So that was the second thing. But well, the third thing. And then the other thing was that. Um, we got up at three o'clock a.m. yesterday to drive home from New York so that we could get home the same day so I could get back to work. And um, I, w I looked at the video really quick when I saw the comments and I saw like my eyes were tired and I sounded really tired. We drove home. It took us about 10 and a half hours to get home. We had to drop off our special needs son at his place and uh, difficult ride home, you know. Um, and uh, I was so tired. My husband passed out on the bed. He was so tired and the house was so hot because we just got in and the house was like 80 degrees. And we, we kind of have this joking argument because I'm in menopause and I like the thermostat very low and he is getting older and he um, likes the thermostat high. And this is a common, you know, argument between um, menopausal couple, you know, woman that's menopause and her husband. If you're at that age, you understand. Anyway, so he was so tired and uh, the house was so hot. You know, we turned on the air a little bit, but I didn't want to make it too cold for him because he was so tired and he just fell asleep. And I said, let me just leave it up high for him because I know he'll be more comfortable sleeping and he's just so tired. He's probably going to sleep for the night now. And I just had that message on my heart, especially about, you know, just, um, what's going to happen over the next year. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go into detail, but I just thought, you know, people have no idea what's happening in the lives of other people. And I thought I've, I've now ventured out and I've been involved with new age people and I've been, been involved with unsaved people. I'm in the medical field. So I'm, I touch the lives of a lot of people that would be considered as unsaved to the church and um, I have never met more judgmental people than, than those who are considered Christians. And I just found it so sad. And I was talking about a letter that I had received um, this past week from a Christian, um, basically judging me about what I believe about Jesus, what I believe, like this isn't even about me hurting another person or doing some kind of a sin or living a sinful life. This is like correcting me about something I believe in my heart and a belief, how my belief systems are evolving and how I am so seeking God in this, you know, what is truth? And this person knows this and it's okay. Like it just showed me my own heart as a Christian in judging others. But that's why I received that letter. I know that God allowed me to receive that letter for that reason. And just seeing so clearly the Pharisee in, um, in Christians 
the spirit of the Pharisee in Christians. And um, I just, I went in the shower. We don't have electric today, so I'm outside in my car. Um, we had storms here and the house is hot. So I'm in the air conditioning in my car right now. But um, I just um, was thinking in the shower, like I was crying and I was saying, God, please forgive these two people who judged me and um, who hurled accusations at me. And I can truly say that I did not wear that. I wear, I do, I wear tank tops. I'm in menopause and I'm hot. I live in Tennessee now and, um, you know, it gets hot here and uh, just working through it. But um, that is not my heart at all. And uh, I just, it, it was totally extreme what was said to me, very extreme. And there is so much extreme judgment that comes out of the church. And this is where God is going. And I just prayed for these two people that God would not hold it against them for judging me. And God would just show them the truth and love on them where they're at and just not hold it against them. And I just released forgiveness to them. But uh, what I want to say, this is where I want to just publicly say how sorry I feel in my heart for the judgments that I have hurled at people that I have felt in my heart that have gone through my heart over the years as a Christian, that I have thought, that I have thought sorceries towards in the oversoul of my mind. This is, this is where God's at. God is giving us the mind of Christ. And let me tell you something, it's not judgment, <laughs> it's redemption. And the Bible has been used as a weapon for Christians to hurl judgment outward, to project judgment towards others, when the Bible was meant to be a passage of our soul, uh, an instruction, you know, a multidimensional revelatory gift to us to reflect back to us what's going on in our soul and to lead us to God in so many multidimensional ways and to show us our own hearts and to reveal to us what is hidden in our soul, in our shadow, in our minds, and, you know, when we judge others, whether openly or in our heart or through our mind, through our thoughts, we are creating witchcraft. It's so serious right now what God is trying to show, especially his people in the church. Because judgment, right, will begin in the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. But also the church is the house of the Lord. But we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the housing of the Lord. And judgment is going to begin there. Jupiter just entered Taurus. <laughs> Taurus is the house of the Lord. It is the body of Christ. And I guess the expansion and the explosion with Uranus there of revelation is going to come to the church for those who are willing to have an ear to hear and an eye to see um, about judgment. There is going to be a w w tidal waves of repentance about judgment, and we are going to stop projecting out on others and begin to turn that reflection back to ourselves and we are going to receive mercy for our own judgments which is going to allow us to extend mercy to others we are going to receive grace to stop judging ourselves because that's to the measure we judge others we will be judged right you know and when I first learned about projection which is a psychological term but it's also a spiritual term and it's also a term having to do with the shadow of our soul. We project out what we really see in ourselves. When I first learned about that, I was like, no way. Like I don't project stuff out. That's not really inside of me. I'm just really speaking out what I see, but it's not. We are blind. We are blind to our projections. And we truly believe that these things that we're projecting out upon others are things that we see in them, but it's really what is resident inside of ourselves. And I just pray, God, would you forgive me for the judgments? And I just prayed this in the shower, but I just want to confess it openly. And I want to ask God to forgive me in front of the world for the judgments that I have projected out on humanity, for the projections of the darkness of my own soul 
and the things hidden in my shadow. As if you're watching the last few videos that I did, you can see the progression of what the Holy Spirit is doing in me. And I believe is going to be doing in the church and in those who are walking with God right now in a very deep way. The Jezebel altars are being torn down. Jezebel and narcissism stand in a place of high uh, judgment. They are in deception. These spirits are spirits of deception. They are the most strongest spirits of self-deception. Um, they come from trauma. They come from pain. They come from darkness. They come from abuse. They come from um, suffering in this world, iniquity. God is clearing out his house and he is sanctifying his house. And he is filling his house with the Holy Spirit and he is giving us the mind of Christ. He is raising up the body of Christ, but he can, he will not do that. Until he works holiness in us and it can only come through grace, it can only come through mercy, through repentance. There is a tidal wave of repentance that is coming. Yes, revival. God is reviving the church. God is elevating our minds to the mind of Christ. But first, the mindsets of the old, the strongholds of the old, the mental deceptions of the old mindsets must be torn down. And for me, coming from the church, I come from spirits of judgment. And our judgment runs deep, church. It runs deep. Jesus sat with sinners, and we are the least of these. We are these sinners. It's just that we don't see these archetypes in ourselves. We are the Pharisees. If we are in the church, we are the Pharisees standing in ivory towers. You know what Jesus called them? If you know the Bible, you know what he called them. Who do you think the Pharisees are? When you read the Bible, who are the Pharisees to you? If you're in the church and you read the Bible, who are the Pharisees of today? I ask you this question. Ask the Holy Spirit who they are. Jesus called the Pharisees broods of vipers, snakes, robbers and thieves, liars. The Pharisee is embedded in the human shadow, in the ego, in the parts of us that we are blind to see. He called them blind. He called the Pharisees blind. We are to cry out right now that we may have eyes to see. God had to take the greatest Pharisee, Paul, and make him blind because he was blind. He could not see. And so sometimes we have to actually stop seeing, looking out at everybody else, with what we see in everybody else. And become blind to what we see out there so that we can look inward. Paul was left with himself when he couldn't see anymore. And he couldn't kill Christ, the Christ followers. Because these Pharisees in us are going to crucify Christ. It is the Pharisee in us that crucifies Christ in us. It's an antichrist spirit. The great humbling will be the great revival. God, would you forgive us? We confess as those in the church and even as healers and other people who have walked in these so-called callings of healing and spiritual authority. I believe the Pharisee spirit is also on these ones who come from a high place of thinking that we have arrived and we have knowledge and wisdom and direction for everybody else. We have judgments for everybody else. Would you forgive us, Lord? Would you humble us? We admit that we have been blind, that we have judged others, that we have hurled accusations at others, just as Satan is the great accuser of the brethren. We have been instruments of Satan. And we have hurled in insults and accusations at the children of God. When we ourselves deserved those judgments, we ourselves deserved those accusations. And yet you cover us even when we deserve them. God, 
would you forgive us for the spirits of judgment? We are not the great judge. The Bible says you are the great judge. We see oh, groups online talking about the word of God, talking about Christ. And we'll see, read all the comments and it's all about other people and what they're not doing and the sin that they're living in and the darkness that they're living in. And if you read this with the mind of Christ, you can see, we can see that it's all judgment. It's all projection. Who do we think we are? God, would you humble us? Please, God, please. Forgive us for this idolatry and thinking that we are the great judge. For your mercy triumphs over judgment. Give us a heart full of mercy. And the way to receive that heart of mercy is to receive mercy for our own sin. Because he who has been forgiven much is able to love much. He who has received great mercy is able to extend great mercy. It is only those who have stand, stood in judgment and self-righteousness and superiority and blindness that cannot extend mercy because we stand in a place of judgment towards others. And we have not received mercy, not truly, God. Please, oh God, open our eyes right now. I know you're doing this work in us and we thank you for it. We thank you for stripping us of these spirits, for breaking the powers of the enemy. Christ, would you arise and do this work? We can't do it. You are warring on our behalf, upon our iniquities. Warring in the heavenlies. We bow. We hide in you, O oh God. Let your voice thunder through the heavens, oh God. Let it thunder, Lord. And break the powers of the enemy. Release your judgments on judgment, oh God. I would rather, like David said, come under your judgment, Lord. I would rather, because you are merciful. I would rather present myself in the fear of the Lord before you, O oh God, in a place of my sin, because I know that you are merciful than to put myself in the hands of men and to run from you and allow you to do what you must do in me, O oh God. War on our behalf and take our souls into your bosom, O oh God, and cleanse us. Break us, forgive us, oh God. And do not hold these sins against us, oh God, but would you open our eyes to see, oh God, as you break the false mindsets, the lies of the enemy that have come with our iniquities, that have been attached to our religion, to our self-righteousness, to our self placed callings for those of us who have called ourselves apostles and prophets and teachers and healers and gurus and yogis and shamans lord would you come and just humble us down oh god reduce us to love to receive your love that we may be forgiven much and be able to love much We humble ourselves before your throne. Release your judgments on the camps of the enemy, O oh God, that have entrapped us, that have lied to us, that have kept us in bondage, that have kept us in sin, that has entrapped us and imprisoned us in mental prisons of lies, 
and deceptions, believing that we were something we were not outside of you, O oh God. Bring us back into the living vine, O oh God, the life force of your spirit, Lord, that we may be conductors of your life force and your spirit, that we may bloom and grow and allow you to work and manifest through us, O oh God, that we will not repel The world that is seeking what is real, that is seeking true love, that is seeking true redemption, that we would not repel the world, oh God, out there, that we would not repel humanity by our judgments, oh God. Please forgive us, Lord, that we would not repel humanity with our judgments, but that you would make us temples of the Holy Spirit conduits of the Holy Spirit's life force and mercy of your heart to flow through us, Lord. Forgive the church of judgment, O God, and break the powers of the enemy that have, that have worked through these spirits, that have set up fortresses and have been given a place to work in the church. Tear them down, oh God, tear them down, tear them down, tear them down. Give us the mind of Christ, heart of mercy, heart that seeks redemption for all. Bring us back to our own path, God, because when we do walk that way, moment by moment, we cannot focus on others. Walking this walk was never meant to focus on judging others. But it was meant to receive mercy so that that mercy could flow through us to others. Undo what the enemy has done to entrap and blind the church in judgment. I include myself. And all those living in self-righteousness and Leviathan spirits Release the power of the great humbling, oh God. Release the power of the great humbling. We know that it's coming. You are coming quickly to raise up your body. You are coming quickly like lightning to redeem us from the curse. For you already have, but in this time frame, in this earth, you are redeeming us out of darkness into light, out of prisons into the liberation of your kingdom. You are so powerful and yet so gentle. You are gentle with the humble, Lord. You are gentle with the humble. Teach us how to move towards you with humility as you call us Holy Spirit. We see it, and we are sorry. We ask for your redemption, your forgiveness, and we thank you for your kindness to us, that we may extend the same kindness to others, and gentleness, and mercy. Pierce our hearts. Pierce the hardness of our hearts, O oh God, that judges others, that focuses on others, that projects on others, that compares with others, that condemns others, that accuses others, 
that hates others, that judges others. For what we have done unto the least of these, we have done unto you. And we have done unto ourselves. Forgive us, O God. Give us eyes to see in the spirit, the truth. In the name that is higher than every other name, right? Do with us what you must, O oh God. For you are kind. And we give ourselves to you. Transform us, O oh God. By the power of your Holy Spirit. For you are coming quickly. And we acknowledge that. We acknowledge your coming, Lord. Amen.